Wonderful. It's all right. We've got time. Okay. So let me just. So you switched off your video again. Now you switched off your volume. <laughs> now you've gone completely. Okay, let's just, I don't know what happened there. So I'm talking with uh, Martin or Mardi. Um, he'll most probably come back in a second. Just give it a minute or two. Come on. Sorry about that. We had a dip in in connection. Yeah. And your video is not working. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Um, is it still there we go. There we go. Cool. There you go. Great stuff. All right. So let's let's uh, keep this official in the sense of uh, creating the container, contracting, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we'll go for forty-five minutes to an hour. Yeah. Okay. And um, just to give uh, people some context, yeah, you've, um, you're a member of our organization and you're busy doing the holding the pilgrimage space. And the reason uh, what, 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 what spoke to you about that was this month is Pride Month and uh, somebody from the LGBTQI plus community, yeah. You've um, you've come to kind of stream now to our community. What what? Well, for me, what's going to be better is to kind of educate me how, as a you know, white straight old male, yeah, can can, can um, what I can learn about this and bring awareness to myself so that we can reach more people as an organisation. Because our common goal is helping people with substance use disorder and the the the, the discrimination that that causes people to to use substances. So that's a context. Yep, you're a student of ours, and um, yeah. So I check in a little bit anxious. Yeah, I'm gonna put my my my, my big foot in my mouth. Yeah. So, so that's what's going on for me. I've got to, oh my God, I'm going to offend and I'm going to be politically incorrect and I'm going to, you know, so, so I've got that anxiety going. How are you doing? How are you checking it? Um, checking, I think, 
anxious as well, I think. Um, pretty much for, for the same reason. Also, for I, I tend to my, my, the speed time between my mind and my mouth is not always there when I'm passionate about something. So mm. I, I, I fly straight over and then I speak faster than what I think so like I miss part out and then I get like this disconnected thing that comes out in the end and um yeah so I'm a bit anxious about that but also excited and I was wondering earlier like what to expect from this this conversation and it's like I'm going in with zero expectation. Zero like I'm just going open in with a like blank page. So yeah. Can I ask you to up your mic volume? Because I really want to capture what 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 you're saying, yep, and uh, I really want to kind of bring awareness, yep, to our organisation around this, yep. So 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 whatever we're going to talk about and however it unfolds, whatever emerges, I'm sure there's going to be wisdom there. So is this better? A little bit better, but not great. And um, now, so yeah, it's a bit. Oh, I was just see if the person is using cable. Let's try. Now I can't hear anything. <laughs> Does this work better? Oh, that's a lot better, yeah. Just switched from laptop to phone. I think my laptop has a bit of issues today. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great. Okay. So let's start again. How are you checking in? Um, checking in a bit anxious. Um, yeah, as I said, my, my filter doesn't always work. So think, things come out disconnected, um, especially if I'm passionate about it. And yeah, but apart from that, checking in expectant, well, not expectant, actually, the opposite quite. Um, Cause with me, expectancy creates anxiety. So if I'm going in on a blank page, then it's cool. Okay. What will unfold will unfold. All right, cool. All right, so 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 where should we go with the conversation? Um, I think a good place to start is stigma. Um, right. And regarding stigma, especially misinformation and preconceived ideas, um, un unwillful ignorance, if I want to put it that way. Um, unwillful ignorance, what does that mean? It means that people either through generational ideas or generational stigma or cultural stigma has certain ideas how to deal with in this case, the, the LGBTQ community or what their perception is, but it's a complete wrong perception due to they're not all they approach somebody or does something that can be seen offensive or that is but harmful in a way like, but not willfully, they do, don't do it like out to harm a person or don't give the right treatment to harm a person. It's just they're not aware of. Okay. Um, so, so, so they're unconsciously incompetent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, they don't mean to harm, yeah. uh, but they do harm. And then they're unwilling to, to kind of learn about their impact of their behavior on a marginalized community. Absolutely. Yes. That, 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 that is coming out of a stigmatization, particularly around sexual orientation. Absolutely. Um, 
if if you're looking at the so I'm not, I'm not going to be using the full acronym the whole time otherwise we're going to spend the whole time okay so i'm going to stick to lgb um lgbt yeah lgbt community um so in that community statistically wise it is one of the it's the, the minority group with the worst recovery statistics with the highest addiction statistics um and a reason for that well there's plenty of reasons but one of it is self stigmatization as well okay. um so if you if, if everybody else's viewpoint and stigma does not help the fact that there can be no inner healing for a person um or the reason why that person goes to on substances to begin with is to cope with this failure they feel inside, this stigma they create themselves coming from external stigmas. Yeah. Uh, then so there's an internal oppression. Yeah. Absolutely. So 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 in um, homosexual men, yeah, coming out, yeah, is a where are you gone? <laughs> I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> Yep, coming out is something that uh, uh, heterosexual men don't have to do. Absolutely. Yep, and and then adjusting to to that, there's their own uh, oppression of your own sexual sexuality. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, in 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 a perfect world, coming out is something that does not actually need to exist. Yeah. Uh, in a perfect world, but we're not in a perfect world. So we're in a pretty fucked up world. Um, for argument's sake, a thing that I read the other day is there's a thousand five hundred and thirty two species of animal, um, which homosexuality has been picked up in. Um, yet mountain gorillas and the humans or the only two species that shows any form of homophobia. Mountain gorillas show homophobia as well. But only to the lesbian members of their tribe. They aggressively remove them from the tribe. So the, again? The, they only show homophobia to the female gorillas that has relationships with other females. The males they leave alone, the females they aggressively remove from their tribe. Wow. Okay, no, this is such a juicy conversation. All right. So so how, how, how do you identify sexually? And can I ask you that question? Um, yeah, yeah, no props. Uh, uh, at this stage, I don't identify. Um, I don't know if that's because of the... It's actually not regarding sexuality. It is a... I'm taking a indefinite leave of absence of relationships for now because I need to work on myself. Um, and, and in that period, I think it will be a periodic thing, but originally identified as gay, came out, uh, come on, this is irritating, um, came out in high school very early as a self protection method, exactly the opposite reason. People, well, it's why people normally stay in. Um, I was in a very traditional, went to a very traditional Afrikaans high school from an English primary school. And it is a very big farming community. So all the local towns, kids go to this high school. Um, and the first week in high school, my, my cousin was equal at that stage. So when they did orientation, I kind of like shied away from them. And then a matrika came up to me and it started like, Frank comments and I just outed myself to you. Like, if you've got a problem with me, come now. Let's sort this out. Which made high school a breeze for me. Um, I think because a small bold kid went up against a senior member of well, other learner, it created this vibe like, leave me alone. I'm not scared of you. But um, at the same time, it made me feel like crap my whole high school career. Because I'm left alone, nobody has an issue with me or my sexuality, but other kids, they just think somebody looks gay and they beat that kid up. Um, whereas I'm open about it, then nobody touches me. Nobody dares confront me about it. Um, actually made me feel worse, I think, in a way. 
So, so in my own kind of bias and judgment and all that sort of stuff, yeah, um, you would not look gay to me, yeah? Like, I mean, you look like a traditional Afrikaans farmer, yeah? Yeah. And, 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 um, and I just want to bust myself for that. It's, it's, I think, a general perception, even in the community itself. Mm. Um, it's like there's this expectancy, I think, that's created that, and as I said, it's in the community itself that you should look a certain way, you should need to act a certain way. And um, I've got periods where I can properly dress myself and look decent, but then there's days that I just like, well, screw this. I'm just going to take it as it comes. And I'm going to conform to whatever. So I'm going on what the day I need to be today. Well, want to not need to be, but as the day goes, I'm not going to put myself in a box with labels. And I think that's that's the first step of being secure of yourself. Um, it's, it's a very important step. Um, there's two or three times where I've walked into a situation where I started a job. Look, I'm not going to go out and wear a signpost around my neck saying, listen, I'm gay, be whatever. But um, I, I've got no issue if somebody asks me, but I'm not going to run to you and like, hello, my name is Martin. This is, I'm gay. Uh, so when people do tend to find out, they like, okay, cool. But um, coming back to what I was saying, I was in a job two times where it wasn't mentioned in the interview. Nobody asked, so I didn't say anything. And then the person directly above me is just like very, very homophobic. And those two times I was like, I don't like this. I don't like working in this area because now it's like, if I do say anything, it's going to be like I've hidden it, which is not the case, but, and it is a very stressful crap environment to be in. Very stressful. Um, both very... those times, both those times I ended up using okay. to cope. Okay. Not that it's a proper ex or valid excuse, but still, um, I can identify with the need that that internal struggle does push you into a corner. Yeah, no, no, no. Definitely will have an impact. Yeah, I would, I would, I would support that. So, so what can we do as an organisation? I think there is not a lot, but there is some bit of background work and studies that's being done on the type of treatment that's necessary or needs to be added to somebody that comes into recovery that's part of the community. Um, where, as on your normal recovery program, certain aspects like especially self-hatred might need to have a bit more sensitivity, not sensitivity, but more, it needs to be more pronounced. Um, need uh, wrong word. Um, there needs to be a bit more emphasis put on that part of a like I would say recovery program for that individual group. Um, whereas, because nothing else gets taken in when you're sitting with a struggling side, you telling yourself like, "What a freaking failure!" or "What a you you're not supposed to be like this." So that that self reflection and self love part of it needs a bit more. And also, I mean, you act is quite a bit different than organizations in the terms of there's no judgment. Um, or, I'm, or I mean, it's a big part of your act is that there's not so, a lot so, of... So we make judgments all the time, yeah? But what we really teach people to do is to, to not be shameful, yeah? not being yeah. judgmental in a shaming way. But, but yeah, we're yeah. dealing with people's lives and we make calls all the time. Yeah. No. And, and, and it's the way that we make those judgment calls that uh, we're deeply compassionate around it. Yeah. Or, or that's what we strive for. And that, that's a word. It's a compassion. Yeah. And, and in our clinic, yeah, I, I be, what we're, we're, we're doing is um, when people come into to treatment, we're looking, we're looking at the reasons that they justify they're using. Yep. Yeah? So, so in your case, you say, well, 
it's really stressful for me in my work environment because of the homophobia that was living in the in the organization that would cause stress for me and I'd go and relieve that stress by using. Yeah. In treatment, if you were in inside treatment, we'd get you to kind of look at how your sexual preference and oppression around that and difficulty is being used to continue and feed substance use disorder. Because there are lots of people that that struggle in, in a heteronormative world that don't use that to justify the substance use disorder. So we try and unpack that without like people take drugs because they take drugs. Yeah. People justify them taking drugs, yeah, in different ways to continue the drug taking. And we're just trying to shine a light on the, and separate the two issues and focus on the substance use disorder. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 what and, and, and that's what the staff in the clinic are, uh, uh, are trained at to be very sensitive because we know that people are coming in carry a lot of stigma already. And on that as well. Um... But what I am interested in is as the, uh, the school, as the training part of it, as we trained people. Yep. How can we be more? I mean, this is a training now. I mean, what me and you are doing now, streaming, listening to your story, getting the wisdom out of this. I think what we're doing now is probably the most important part of what is lacking, and that is straightforward, courageous conversations regarding sexuality, because there is a lack of, whether it is by lack of knowledge around the area, so it gets like people shy away from it, or um, as you and I both said, and we, we're scared that it's going to come out wrong, or going to offend, or... Um, it, it's stopping us having courageous conversations regarding the issue, which just push, push the plug on the shelf, if, if that makes sense in any way. Um, it, makes, it, it, but, it makes a lot of sense. So my own kind of uh, homophobia around talking about sexuality, yep, I've got to kind of bring it up and just kind of own it, being the, being the leader. Yeah, whether I like it or not. And I don't want to, to, to be in a position where I go, oh, yeah, we're not homophobic. Look, we got we got Martin with us. He, <laughs> he's our guy carrying the flag. Yeah. And 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 I don't want to. It, it's like um, in race work. Yep. I mean, I'm a white male. Yep. And and, uh, you know, if 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 uh, my white maleness has an impact on 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 black people yeah because of what's happened in the past yeah and i can't go and justify why i'm not racist yeah to 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 like i don't want to sit here and justify to you look i'm not homophobic i love everybody come and work for us we need we, yeah do you know what i mean like we want to be able to train people to be good coaches to work in with individuals in organizations that bring psychological safety, whatever their kind of orientation is. But that that creates in its own a problem of, um, I mean, um, to be honest and admitting it here, I'm very grateful I'm not in your position because the position you're in is you, you want to create this diverse, or you create this diverse group, but you've got so many things to keep in mind um i mean in all fairness being respectful towards somebody that that's whether it's religious beliefs or moral beliefs i mean i'm not going to go attack somebody else's beliefs because they're against it um but you have to be sensitive to that person as well um so you you're out there showing love to the gay community but you also need to show love to the guys that's opposed to it um so Kudos to you for that one, because I really don't want to be in your position. Yeah, well, well, and 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 that's the I, I don't I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's what the job is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's also one of the reasons courageous conversations fall to the wayside is because of the potential 
of the explosion that can blow up. Mm. Um, other people can take offense of it. That's completely against it. Um, but then again, that's something somebody in the, within the LGBTQ community sits with on a daily basis. It's a question of you just existing and being alive, does that offend somebody else? Is it going to cause a blow up somewhere along the line? Um, which is also not a way to live. So I guess my job is to facilitate the courageous conversations. Yeah. And, and to, to uh, what you're saying is to have compassion for both sides. Yeah. And as the one side that's been oppressed, as their voice comes up, it impacts the other side. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, it's it's a lot like race work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or, 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 or gender work, working with with uh, male, female. You know, like um, why aren't organisations transforming? How come we we haven't got you know more 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 women in in the boardroom? The 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 numbers are still skewed to kind of white males also i mean yeah look it's, it's not a unfortunately it's it's sad to say but the realistic part of it is as well it's not something that's going to change overnight um it is it's one of those things that there is just no quick fix to apply um and that's where I shall fall short is sometimes I want to, I see, I see what this thing and I see the result, but I don't see the in-between part. Um, I don't see the journey getting there or I want to skip the journey and the instant gratification of let's get this injustice out of the way and let's just carry on as it should be. Um, and, and that's going to be the hard part is I think yeah, getting to that point where, where it's okay. Um, it's a lot better than arguments like 10 years ago. Um, every generation, not even generations, every decade that passes, people tend to become more tolerant to the human beings around them. Um, and it does show. But I don't, I think from my part and members of the community, um, then this unrealistic view of tomorrow the world's going to be a better place when you wake up needs to go. Um, but it's also a mindset you give yourself to cope with every day. Um, sorry, I don't know if that that looks look a bit random now. It's just something that came to mind. Um, How are you feeling at the moment? Actually, really relaxed. Okay. The anxiety is... <coughs> Um, authenticity that's a one word that keeps coming up in my mind um, in the organization where you've got coaches and training um, there is statistically wise a lot of people that cruise through life that won't come out in a work environment because of I mean in a personal environment you're out Work is different. You, you, there's a lot of parts you keep separate from yourself. Well, keep separate to yourself in a work environment that you would be open about in a personal environment because it's people around your tribe at home is people you trust on a different basis than at work, I presume. Um, but for a coach to have that courageous part of them to say, all right, well, you know what, been there, done that. Um, I'm truly authentic. This is who I am. So I'm not saying like paint the flag on the door or wear a label or a sign as I said in the beginning, but um, giving any potential client the option that should they choose to, or should they at that stage in their life not feel safe or that this, and this is available should you need or want to choose it not saying go to somebody because they gay you're gay so you have to go to gay coach not but this is the option that is available for you should you want to go that route should that make you feel more comfortable 
Well, there's a, there, I mean, there's another oppression that goes on there, you know, that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you should be able to just go to any coach that resonates with you. Yeah. And we shouldn't be prescriptive around it. Yeah. yeah? Um, and, uh, I was coaching a, a, a black CEO. Yeah, when him and his wife were on the plane and the pilot that came onto the plane was also black and then he turned to his wife and he said shit you think we're safe so there's that there's that that sort of stuff you know um so there's the kind of the belief that the white doctor knows better which is complete bullshit yeah, yeah absolutely but, but it's the the and, and then people make these kind of calls oh here's someone here's a gay person let's send them to martin because martin's gay you know maybe yeah. it would be a, a terrible choice you know no understandable i, I mean it, 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 it's i mean yeah um yeah that's why i say it, it under no circumstances can it be a case of that's we like i mean no one of the places where one of the organizations when i was in the uk if somebody came in and they needed to talk to somebody, um, males was only allowed to go to males, females only allowed to females. And if somebody does come in and they are homosexual, it's like, all right, well, there, there was this whole, whole like sit down meeting, like they don't know where to send this person out because they don't feel comfortable sending him to a male count. And but there's this whole thing they can't see. It's like, what the hell? How, how is this? in any way helpful to any situation i get the exactly. fact that you don't you don't want relationships to form or you don't want to create a detachment but bloody hell this is the 21st century after all what are you feeling now as you talk about that um a bit of agitation still <laughs> like yes actually agitation because it's like bloody hell can't people just get on why is it an issue to begin with whether what gender you are, so you need to go to that gender coach. If, I mean, if you're scared that there's going to be an unhealthy attachment, then up your coaching training. Because then exactly that is something okay, that needs great. to be a groundwork of your coach. Great. So, so, so I completely agree with you. It goes back to the, to the client or the person to be given the agency to make the choice to select where they want to go. If it was uh, coaching in the workplace around performance coaching or, or, or being showing up better in work or helping someone with their get mental wellness within the workplace, yeah, as opposed to it being the responsibility of like HR, an HR role to decide where this person goes. And we must have some policy and procedure and blah, 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 blah. absolutely. Okay, so um, this is what I'm trying to co-create with you here. Yeah, it's like so. As an organization, how do we onboard people? How do we train them? How do we skill them up? And how do we have courageous conversations? Yeah, without setting you up and harming you because of because of uh, your sexual orientation. I look. Look, the idea is to. St well, to have some form of workplace support group, should there be anybody, but that would require seasoned coaches that is available to be part of that group that is prepared. Because, I mean, there's so many people that's already volunteering a lot of their time um, that's busy as hell. So I, I don't want to go either to somebody who's like, I think you're gay or you're gay, so you have to be part of the group or admin on this group. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're That's exactly not, the same bloody feeling. We, yeah, we're not doing anything like that, you know. So yeah, um, but I think willingness to be prepared to make mistakes along the way hmm. is a big thing. Okay. Um, so instead of showing away, we, we could have done better. We could have. We could have, but does. Does that change anything today? Yeah, I mean, we still must also remember what the business is about. Yeah. Like, like I mean, what the, like, like. 
at the end of the day, it, it grows. Um, it's like anything. It, no business has started perfect, and there there is a growth period, and this is part of it. Um, no business is going to, from day one, have every aspect. I mean, it's it's humanly impossible to ever have every aspect covered in a specific way or a so i think the whole thing about yeah there's going to be mistakes but i'm prepared to take the chance and see how we can help how we can facilitate is a big thing and that that's actually a very awesome step already um what's it saying with the one business that you get paid to say i don't know maybe i don't know is a good place to start like we know there's an issue we know there's an issue that needs to get addressed but how to effectively get that right i don't know um it's gonna have to start somewhere though but well from a from a business case yeah the more diverse our workforce is the better it is for productivity because people when they work together and they work well together and they and they form healthy relationships it's very good for the business yeah and and the one skill set that uh, is, is being looked for in leaders is uh, compassion and empathy yeah as as the the world of business changes yeah so so it's it's um, because the 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 job sites the, the the roles are changing within the workplace yeah um so it's very interesting to to watch this stuff and then to learn how to teach the stuff. Uh, I, I, I said, I, I, like uh, a lot of these gurus, so-called business gurus, preach the stuff of what organizations should be doing, but we're the people that teach what other people are preaching. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm, I'll, so I'll how do we saying, become I'll... more diverse? Well, we need a policy. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a quota. We need to have a quota of people from the LGBTQ community. Oh, well, there we've got Martin. Well, let's put him on. That ticks that box. Great. And, and Martin's useless at the job. But no, we have to keep him there because, you know, and then Martin feels, well, I'm not, I'm only here because, you know, because, because of my sexual preference. Yeah. Not because I'm a good coach. Yeah. So, so, so all those type of dynamics. I've only been in, in this role because they need women on the board. Yeah. But they don't actually appreciate my feminine wisdom that I'm bringing. It, there's like a company in the town that I oh, live in. I I mean, they, they had to fill a racial quota of X amount of employees where, I mean, this is the, the biggest load of bullshit I've ever, ever heard in my life. So, they didn't meet the quota of, well, the racial quota. So they employed a group of people that they were not prepared to invest or give any skills. They put, they had four offices with four decks per office that the PC was there. And it's like, well, there's the six games on it. You get paid, you get paid a monthly salary. There you said, just play games, you're filling a quota. We're not prepared to invest in your future. We're not prepared to give you any skills. Well, that's just, that's just racism. That's, that's not empowerment. Exactly. So that's what you're saying about ticking the boxes. It's, 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 it's window dressing. It's fraudulent. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not, it's not trans transformative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that, that stuff pisses me off because it just exactly. impacts everyone. It fills the numbers on paper, but it doesn't. It actually makes that person feel like, all oh, right, well, we are cool. I'm filling a quota, but bloody hell. So it's happening over here with lived experience. Yeah. Organizations are now, they, they, they realize the benefit of having people with lived experience. Yeah. And to, to fill those tick boxes, you get funding by, by, by government grants. So people are going around saying, oh, yeah, we've got people with lived experience. And and they're actually bringing dysfunction to the organization but the organization meets the quota so they get the funding so there's commercial pressure yeah 
and 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 that's what's what's happened in South Africa with the racial stuff around transformation yeah so so how do you actually transform the spirit of the organization and how you do things so how do we 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 you know how do you transform a bank and that and then the, that that that's like the, the world, certainly from my generation, was very focused on the P for profits. That's what you were taught. To, that's what you like. Good leadership delivers the profits. Shareholder value. That's what people were taught in institutions. You know, this is what you do. And now we're living with the consequences of that. And now leaders need to focus on the three P's. People, planet and profit. Yeah. And we're very good at focusing on people and planet. <laughs> we're not doing well as profit. But 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 uh, you act as a public benefit organization and we have to benefit the public. Yeah. It's also dependent on whether it's financial profit or human profit. Or well there in human in creating recovery capital is what, what, what we measure. We're doing brilliantly. Doing fantastically at that. Absolutely. I mean, like in my case, if, if I could resonate in the sense of I did a lot of things for because it gives approval from people. Um, and then I joined the BRS program. Not at that stage as well, it was a case of I didn't want to do it. Um, it's just the social worker that I was busy working with, um, she's like, well, you're, you're busy taking over this rehab, so this might be a good course for you to do. And I don't want to do it alone. I'm going on this course and I don't want to do it alone. And I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, that's cool. I'll do it. And it just resonated so big time with me. I think that was PRS triple one. Um, we're going on PRS one to four now soon. And I've, Pretty much attended everyone at, in between. I think there's three that I've missed. I've certified a while ago, but that's like it, it's. And then I realized, like, well, okay, I'm actually kind of good at the coaching thing, but because I'm good at it, doesn't mean well that's where I want to be. So I'm gonna like attend more courses, attend do CPRC, do do what I can to get eventually get to facilitate level, because that is my ultimate goal. But um. I think it's growing along, growing as you've got and finding a passion for it. Um, but it also increases authenticity. I used to be crap scared of confrontation. I hated confrontation of a passion. Now it's not, I, I don't go and look for it, but if it comes my way, it comes my way and I'll stand my ground. Um, so when How it, when did it comes you learn to, that? I think the a big thing, the first two PRS that I attended, the, the things that stood out for me on the and not that it was taught more than anything else, the two things that really resonated with me was authenticity. Okay. Um, that that again, and I was like, I cannot be authentic for myself why people please to avoid confrontation. Okay. Um, so we get we so we, so we created a safe environment for you to get to know your authentic self and then to bring your 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 authentic self towards your persona yeah yeah so 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 there was a coming together this is who i am this is what i am and this is where i am in the world as opposed to you know here's here's me over here and this is what i project to the outside world yeah and a lot and of i didn't used to be like that sorry no um i I had no fear of confrontation. Like that's what that's what kept me safe through high school is having that no fear of confrontation on the go inside. But along the line, I somewhere along the line lost that and became fearful and lost myself in the process. And I think finding it again was was amazing. So that's what your recovery is. That's your your you've recovered your authentic self. You know, the culture of adversity or the culture of addiction robbed you of that. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Fantastic. 
and I think that's that's having the ability to create a space like that is pretty much what is lacking regarding the general, I mean, worldwide LGBTQ recovery. And so you're not doing bad on it. You actually got it. Um, yeah, it's there already looking at it in that sense. Because that's yeah, okay. So, so we know that we've got it. Yeah. In the sense that we know that we haven't got it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we also know that it takes time for people to come in and then to realize and to learn and to feel safe in it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. So, okay. Now, now, now the way people work together is very different nowadays. We've now got the hybrid workplace where people are working from home, people are working in different countries. Some people go into the office, you know, some people don't. You know, the, the, you can get, get foreigners to do, do the same roles in different countries with different cultures and do it to the, a better price. It's more cost effective. There's all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So diversity and being culturally aware of things. And the more you kind of practice that and realize that and people get used to it the better it is for the organization. And this is why we've developed the role of the systemic wellness practitioner. So, so, so you d develop somebody like you that would work in an organization to teach the organization how to bring people together and create an emerging co-creative collaborative relationship. Like me and you both came onto this call and we're both kind of like, oh, fuck, how are we going to dance this? Yeah, we're both passionate about this. Yeah. And and um, and, I, and I, I appreciate what we've created here and what's kind of emerging. So what I've learned is that you've learned that we actually are doing quite a good job. <laughs> Which is a very good thing to know. It's a very good thing. It's a brilliant place to start. I think it's also, it's easy to look or get stuck on statistics um, to look where things are lacking, but then to generalize and apply it, all right, well, recovery has a bad statistic in what, but you can't apply that everywhere. You can't make everybody wear the same jacket. Hmm. Well, that's that's also where academia needs to change, because uh, there, there, there's always a, a block that kind of says, well, where's the where's the research? Where, where's the evidence? You know, what's and um, I, I mean, I get so angry about it because, I mean, if people cannot see that, like mental health is an issue in the world, like you don't need any more research, like, come on, guys, let's just start addressing it. Yeah. Thank you for creating this platform and well, having this conversation. Well, no, thank you. I mean, when you when 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 this is all I did was align myself with your passion. Yeah. In 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 fact, uh, I had I have had nothing to do with it. I'm only get, now getting to know you. It's all the it's all the it's it's the culture of the organisation around us that's created it. So your social worker that you're working with, you kind of like, come, I don't want to do this alone. You've come along and you've kind of looked cautiously and, and now you're part of the cult. <laughs> yeah, you're year and a half down the line and I think she attended two of the classes and moved on. Have you life. been here a year and a half? <laughs> yep. Wow. I was, wow. I, as I said, I, I got stuck on, on PRS, attended for, like, for almost 14 of them, almost everyone, and then yeah, decided, well, it's not going to stay there. It's not going to move on or be able to get to facilitation stage by just attending every bloody PRS course that there's available. Um, need to step out that box mm. and grow a bit. Yeah, okay. 
Well, I'm going to suggest you do the next systemic wellness practitioners course. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we got seven minutes left. What's 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 the takeaway for you? Um, that I need to go sit and dig a bit and figure out why. Just on a personal thing, this this. I've lost you. You've, you. Sorry, that That's was okay. all that came through. Um, yeah, so I need to go and just do some for self reflection, but also I'm actually quite chuffed to myself in that respect. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I've got this ability to. I made friends with my shadow self like a very long time ago. Um, and that tend to be the only person I see. I don't necessarily like the light side out of it. Um, that's where I'm comfortable, but this is brought out the other part as well. I didn't tend to see a bit more of the light side, not just the shadow side. Okay. Which is cool. So I've learned that um, I'm not a bad leader. <laughs> yeah, I, I see. Yeah, but um, the fact that I know my flaws is, I think, is a good thing. Yeah. Um, so that so that brings safety. And then, as I say that, the voice in my head goes, "Oh no, David, just you. Now you're getting arrogant." <laughs> Not at all. So I'm very grateful for you doing this. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to the day when when we don't need to have Pride Month. Yeah, like every day's a Pride Day, and it doesn't really kind of. It's like uh, when we have Mandela Day. Like every day should be Mandela Day. Yeah. Not 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 once a year or once a month in. In, uh, I, I look forward to you know, creating community and awareness around that. Um, I think I've shared this quote before in pilgrimage, but um, let me just grab it quickly. It, it's actually very profound, um, but at the same time, it knocks me every time. Um, and it, it's not just about pride as itself. Um, so and and are you okay if I if I post this on YouTube? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No All right. Because what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to post it on YouTube, capture the transcript, and I'm just putting together a, a portfolio of evidence ar ar around how we work with organisations and how 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 we teach people this stuff. Cool. Um, it, it doesn't give me the full thing now, but. Sorry about that, I just added. It comes down to um, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed of reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Pride Month was not born out of the need to celebrate sexuality, but out of the need to overcome rejection and fear. Um, instead of asking yourself, why there is a pride month. Be grateful that there shouldn't be a straight pride. Mm. 
and I'm looking forward to that day. So lots of love to you, Mahdi. Thank you so much, David. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd... Carry on. No, no, no. It's all cool. I was just going to say, I'd, I'd check out with pride <laughs> and gratitude. Great. Yeah, I think I'm checking out of immense gratitude to be able to be part of this organization. Cool. That's really cool. That's such a nice smile you've got on your face. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.